Dean Heffernan has overcome a lot in his football career. From grinding his way to making his professional debut at 22, recovering from career-ending injuries to playing for the Socceroos. Dean has seen it all in his football career. Dean returned to the Wanderers in 2018, first with the club's academy, before taking up the role as head coach of the club's Westfield W League side, alongside Catherine Canuli and lifelong friend Michael Beecham, and led the Wanda women to their first ever final series and has every intention of going even further next season. I spoke with Dean in the state-of-the-art Wanderers Centre of Football. Dean, congratulations, re-signing with the club. Um, what does it mean to you, personally, to be re-signing? Yeah, look, it's great. And as you said, it's, it's been a very tough time for a lot of people around the world. Um, it's some welcome news, welcome good news. And yeah, really excited to get another opportunity. It means a lot because um, we definitely have unfinished business, for one. And in anything I do, I always like to finish what we start. And there's a lot of things for this season that, that we can achieve, that we can continue to build. Um, the atmosphere that we created around the group last season was fantastic. And that comes down to the players we're able to bring across to our club, the players that we're able to work with, the personalities of the staff um, and everyone involved around the W League side. It was such a fresh, um, happy atmosphere and that, you know, attributed a lot to what we were able to achieve. So um, really excited to continue that. And um, yeah, with the staff from last season in Megzi and Kath in particular, Michael Beecham and Kath Canooley. Mm. Yeah, we get to uh, continue on and hopefully do a lot better than what we did last season as well. He's a good friend of yours as well. What's, what's it like to work uh, with a mate? Is there the few blow ups here and there or how, how does it work? I've got, if I was working, I've got four brothers and I've worked with them all and uh, there's always the odd little blow up, but it's over in a minute. How's it go? Yeah, look, it's, well, as you said, Tim, you've got brothers and I've got two brothers and I've got Megzi as well, who I consider a brother. And, you know, we, we have some, some good arguments. We challenge each other to be better. We challenge each other to think into more detail uh, when we're leading into games. Um, there were certain games there where um, we'll be in the meeting room talking about how we're going to go about tactically and what we needed to do or change. And at times, Kath would just sit back in a chair and just kind of look side to side as if she was at a tennis game. And me and Megzi would go at it until we felt that we had a game plan to go and get three points for the club. And that's what it's all about. When you have staff, you want them to challenge you. Um, you want to challenge them. And we all want to challenge each other to bring our level up to a standard where we can win things. And that's what has to happen. How exciting is it to be a part of the women's game? This, this is one sport, uh, one area of this sport that has grown exponentially. Obviously, there still needs to be some parity in places internationally, but the growth has been extraordinary. The quality, amazing. And that's the main thing, I think, there, right there, Tim, is the quality. And we've seen that. I read a recent report, um, the differences between the 2019 Women's World Cup to the 2015, and the output from the players um, in terms of their physical output, um, Tactically, you can see that the game's just evolved so much on the, in the women's space. And um, that's the main driving force, that these girls continue um, to want to get better and improve. And they're, they're dragging the game right up to the top and giving us something to watch every other week. And, you know, I, I, I know too well from our Wanderers girls and um, the readings we we're getting on their GPS data. And it's, it's as much as what guys will do in a game, the amount of sprints, um, high velocity sprints, the amount of Ks in a game. Um, and you can just see from our girls last season that the quality in their football's there as well. No excuses on the wall here at the club in the gym. And it's very much a cornerstone of the way women's soccer is played. Yeah, for sure. There was never any excuses here with our club anyway. And I can only speak for the Wanderers and, and what we created here last season. and. That's why I loved working with those girls so much. They were selfless. Um, they worked hard for each other. They, they walked in here every day to try and improve and get better. And, you know, we know in football, 
that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that you might not always get what you deserve out of football games. But by working as hard as we did, we give ourselves the best opportunity to actually achieve things, and that's what we did last season. It was a difficult summer, wasn't it? The weather, the bushfires, made an impact. Yeah, it wasn't nice. It wasn't nice at all. Um, for some of these girls in particular that came from overseas to experience an Aussie summer and, and play football here and um, be able to experience things outside of football, okay? Because we can't expect the girls to only be focused on football 24-7. Um, they can prepare that way, but they also need to have lives and go see what Australia and Sydney has to offer. But as you said, the smoke, um, the areas that were closed off that people couldn't travel, people losing houses, you know, you never want to see or hear about that. Um, it was tough times for everyone. There was games of football being played when they probably shouldn't have been played as well. Um, but look, like you said on the wall back there, no excuses. The girls never made a single excuse. You know, we backed them in, in what they wanted to do in terms of training in the smoke. If it was a bit too much, we pulled it. Um, certain games as well, we, we'd had little meetings beforehand to make sure that everyone was comfortable with what we were about to do in those conditions. And like you said, there was never any excuses from those girls. Kristen Hamilton, what an extraordinary award. What, what, a, what a compliment to her and what she achieved for the club. Yeah, look, it's definitely not a compliment to, to me or us as a club. It's a compliment to her and one that she deserves. You know, I, I saw the work she put in from the moment she arrived. Um, she was straight in the gym. The day she arrived off the plane, she was in here on the roller, working hard, doing some runs. And that just set the tone for the season for Kristen and also set the tone for for what I was expecting as well, to have someone that had so much success in the States, um, to get a recent call up to the US women's national team, which is no easy feat. Um, so straight away we knew the type of person and the type of player we were getting and every day she pushed everyone. Um, we learned from her as well. And um, yeah, she was, she was great to have around the club. And you know, we talk about culture and um, you know it gets thrown around quite a lot and I'm a big believer in culture is just the the people that you have around the club and around the team and it grows from there and you know she had a big part to do with uh, everything that we created last year as a club. It wasn't easy but she managed to overcome hurdle after hurdle and she did a great job here with the Wanderers. Yeah and you look at her team uh, at North Carolina Courage the players that she competes against every day and to try and get a position in that start in 11. And she was able to do that for huge parts of um, last season before she came to the Wanderers. And that was a big thing. There was um, a lot of names getting thrown about um, for us. And I watched a lot of games. And to be honest, Kristen wasn't a name that came up from anyone. And the more games I watched um, of other players, there was Kristen always just performing always doing well, always working hard, selfless runs, tracking all the way back in the 90th minute of the game, scoring plenty of goals as well. And that's the kind of player I like. Um, they need to be selfless and put the team first. And she definitely did that and we're lucky to have her. What about this facility? It's just extraordinary. And I know that from Kristen Hamilton's perspective and Lynn Williams and, and players that came to the club from other parts of Australia, they just cannot get over how good the facilities are. We are very lucky. We're very lucky and this is something that's been in the works for a long time for this club and there's been some players that have come through these doors and some players from you know, eight years ago across the road where we were training and some legends of the game that helped lay a platform uh, for the club and council and supporters and, and everyone involved to be able to provide something like this for the future and for now. And it's been great. Uh, we're very lucky to have these kind of facilities, Bankwest Stadium as well. Um, you know, it, it's all set up for something special um, for the Wanderers in terms of the W League, the A League. We've got an academy of players coming through, you know, consistently good players coming through that young academy system as well into the first team. So in terms of the club as a standpoint, in infrastructure and, and everything around it, it's set up for something special and it's just now time to execute. It really is an extraordinary place, isn't it? I would think that a lot of the, 
the women that have come from other clubs um, would find this extraordinary. And that's the thing, and like I said before, Tim, in, in regards to the work and the professionalism of these girls and, and the amount of um, sacrifice they made throughout last season um, to be professional footballers and to perform at their best every day and, and on the weekend for the game, they deserve this. Every female player deserves to have something like this um, to help them be the best that they can be. And, and perform and look, we're, we're very lucky. It was great for these girls to be able to experience that uh, last season and you know, hopefully a lot more to come. What about the World Cup? How exciting is it to have the Women's World Cup coming to Australia? Yeah, like you said, we needed some good news uh, around the game. Um, a, a World Cup here on our own, on our own footsteps, on our own door, um, it's gonna be great. And we, we know that the Asian Cup that we had here for the Socceroos and how much of an advantage that was uh, for the Socceroos. We spoke about, I remember Ange speaking about other teams coming here and, and possibly not realising, you know, the, the trip from Perth to Sydney or for a group game or, you know, kind of underestimating the weather and different things like that and how hard the grounds were compared to Europe. So a lot of little advantages that we can take from that and I'm sure whoever's in charge will We'll have one eye on that as well and, and surely give Ange a call because he's won a major trophy on our shores and hopefully that's what we can do for the girls and, and a generation of girls now who, um, who have something to strive for and you think about the 10 year old girls who are going to be in the stands watching those games, how many footballers we're going to get out of that and you know, all it takes is that little spark to, to get someone going and, and to love the game and, and with the way the game is now and grassroots level and as an organisation it's getting better every year so you know there's so much good things to come in the women's space for football. You must have learnt so much in that period of your playing life that you can take now into the coaching role. Yeah look it's so many ups and downs in football um, that's for sure and I think the main thing is you've got to try and stay neutral in all of those moments um, things happen, that's, that's a given, especially in football. You're going to lose some, you're going to win some. Um, you just got to try and stay in the moment and, and focus on, on what's next because that's what's going to um, give you an outcome of what you want to achieve. So if you dwell too much on things in the past, it's, it's just not going to help. So that's something I learnt as a player for sure. Yeah, it's a, it was an amazing journey as a player, one I'm very grateful for, the, the opportunities along the way. Um, probably a bit of a late starter, not playing my first game till I was 22, as a professional, 22, 23. Um, so yeah, there was opportunities along the way I just couldn't say no to purely because of my age. So like going to Germany at 26. Um, what was that like? Yeah, Germany was great. It was cold, um, but an awesome experience. You know, some, some fantastic players were on a training camp in Austria. And I think we had 14 players from our squad at the 2006 World Cup. So, and slowly they just stream in from straight from the World Cup into our training camp. And there was no Australian players there at the time because we obviously went into the round of 16. So Michael Beecham wasn't there, Josh Kennedy wasn't there just yet. Um, so yeah, it was an interesting time. Um, but you know, I'm still friends with a few of the German players from there. Um, and a couple of the Brazilian guys as well. So yeah, it's, it was a great experience um, and one that, yeah, I'll never forget. What was it like playing for Australia when you finally put the Socceroos jersey, national anthem, uh, being a part of the Australian team after fighting hard, making your debut late? Yeah, look, it was, it was an amazing time. Um, something that you always want as a player and as a kid growing up. I used to draw pictures and colouring in and, you know, there was always a dream to do that, but I, you just don't know if it's ever going to become a reality. Um, yeah, obviously after I, I injured my leg as well, I thought that it would be a, a difficult time to try and get back from a broken leg and, and into the national team and not even so much that, just by playing well at the Mariners again. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to have good people around me, um, guys like Andrew Clark, who was a strength conditioning coach at the Mariners at the time. Um, Laurie McKenna, who um, would just help you in a way, uh, like you were talking about before, in a mentor and, and help get the best out of you and um, focus on what was next. And 
you know, getting that opportunity to play for Socceroos was, yeah, fantastic. One that I'll never forget, that's for sure. What about yourself? What about that broken leg on your brother's wedding day? Yeah, look, I think um, never a good time to, to break your leg. I, I remember every moment in that game as well because luckily I was able to be at the church and I was able to be at the wedding for my brother and stand next to him at the altar when he married his beautiful wife. So, um, you know, that part was is there and I'm very thankful that I could be there for that jumped in the car straight after the church went up to Central Coast um, to play in that game against Sydney um, I think we ended up losing 5-4 um, but we're up 2-0 and we're cruising and then um, I remember Alex Brosk and Denny Vukovic coming out and I and I thought to myself I was I was thinking at 2-0 60th minute, yeah, Laurie will take me off. I can go down for the reception. Everything will be okay. Denny Vukovic got sent off. We copped two goals just before half time. So it was 2 2, man down. And I kind of felt, yeah, I'm going to have to finish this game off. And uh, it wasn't until the 90th minute that um, the tackle happened and I, I broke my leg. And, you know, these things happen. Yeah, it, everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer in that. It set me on another path. and changed my mentality a lot as well in terms of um, you know when you feel as though you've something's just there and you, you might take it for granted a little bit so um, coming back early re-injuring the leg the same place breaking it again definitely taught me a lesson that you know I might not be able to play again and so it really changed my mindset on being a professional um, making more sacrifices I always found that um, as a professional, it's, it's not so much what you're willing to do, it's the things that you're willing not to do. And from that moment on, I was willing not to go out and have a social life. I was willing to miss Christmas. I was willing to miss New Year's Eve, weddings, the amount of friends' weddings and things like that. But these are the things you have to do if you wanted to get back to that level. As we wrap it up and bring it back to the women's game and your role, that must help. Uh, when you look back, you think, well, that's helping me now because I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think I think the biggest thing that Michael and I always talk about is we just can't forget what it was like to be a player. That's that's key. And early in my coaching career, I feel like I, I did that a little bit. I forgot what it was like. I forgot that I definitely wasn't at my best every day. You know. So why wasn't I at my best? And why wasn't I training hard enough certain days and maybe had a quiet game on the weekend? And um, these are things that I have to think about now as a, as a manager when I see that in a player that we can't expect them to always be at their best. Something might have happened on the way to training. Something might have happened the night before at home with their family. And these are the questions that we need to ask or just be mindful of the fact that you know, no one's ever going to be at their best every single day. And if they are, then that's fantastic. But you've got to be able to expect that um, there's other things happening in people's lives. And that's what we need to be mindful of. What about this team and where it goes to next season? Look, I think for us, as I said at the start, we've definitely built a foundation now that uh, there's an atmosphere here, that there's an expectation that we want to finish higher than what we did this season. That's for sure. Um, I think in terms of our style of play and, and having a year of experience in the job, that we're definitely more than capable of doing that. I think the new players that come in straight away, they'll feel the atmosphere and they'll understand after the first couple of sessions what it means to be a Wanderer and to play for this club and to play for this team because we've got driving force of the core group of players back. Um, that want to get better every day and, and want to try and improve and um, we've got the facilities to do that. So for the new players coming in, it's, they're going to know straight away, they're going to feel it and they're going to be a part of something. Um, we're not so much creating anything new anymore, it's more so heading in the same direction but just trying to get better. It's just an exciting time, you know. Um, really, really keen to see all the players um, Hopefully we can finalise the squad over the next month, two months and um, yeah, have a start date and get ready to go. Congratulations on re-signing. Thanks, Dean. Thanks very much, Tim.